breakfast back at 11 p.m. with his pen. I've just returned from Leslie's, where I spent a very pleasant afternoon, tea, and evening. They were very cordial and made it the best Sunday I've put in since leaving home. I noticed that Mrs. Leslie is up stump, apparently, again. Now consider yourself very fortunate in not having her experience, or even that of Lily, who, if she keeps on, will beat Mrs. Leslie. I intend on reaching London and getting a draft to send to you for usual, the usual Christmas reminder. While at Leslie's, I had him make out one and herewith endorse it. You'll know best what to get yourself and the children. I'm sorry I can't spend time with you, but hope this will be the last one we will have to spend apart. I hardly know where I will spend Christmas, but expect it will be Simcoe or Bradford. You can envision me on that day putting in the most lonesome kind of day. Too far from Brockville to spend the day there, and even if it was close, chances are I would not go in for fear of attraction. The week I remained there after you left gave me enough of Brockville without you and the children. I'm making all my advertising contacts on this trip for three years, which will save me a heap of traveling during the next two or three years, which I think will be satisfactory to you. If I don't find a letter from you reaching me in London tomorrow, it will give me a cold chill. Your first and only letter received so far was dated November 28th, and it hardly seems possible that I will not get one there. With best love to yourself and the children, wishes for a Merry Christmas, George. Thank you.